okay, I uh, don't want a copyright strike there. I don't know if I'll get one for that. But yeah, great Scott, what have we done? Oh my god. Wait, Doc, you tell me this thing's nuclear? Whoa! We're gonna build the, uh, well, we got a Diagostini complete set of parts for the Back to the Future DeLorean. Um, it, fun fact is, uh, actually, all the Diagostini stuff, if you open up uh, the parts or the manual, uh, somewhere here or there, you will see Eagle Moss on everything. So it was Eagle Moss's thing, and I guess Diagostini just, uh, you know, was like, well, 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 you can't sell that in Japan. We can only sell that kind of stuff here, or, or whatever. Or, or Eagle Moss just didn't want to set up Japanese distribution and deal with whatever their regulation was. But we got, look at that, parts. Oh, God, a really crappy screwdriver. Um, out of time. Well, the license plate's upside down, but we're not going to use that. Why? Because we got mods. We've got a whole pile of good goodies from uh, Mike Lane. Oh, this is my, uh, we'll use that That later. This is Tamiya um, braided hose. Um, oh, oh God, so many, so many mini cable ties. So many. Oh, oh, yep, gold box mesh. Uh, but yeah, many, many, many cable ties. These things, he's the, he's the only game in town. Just got to pay the piper. Um, but when Eagle Moss first tanked and went under, Mike Lane put all of his Eagle Moss, all of his Eagle Moss related products on like 50% clearance. So he bought everything. We got this gold mesh transfer. We've got some, uh, green tube rub-on transfers. Uh, we got some Mr. Fusion fuel and the base plate. We got his full set of vinyl stickers, plus an extra vinyl sticker I got off eBay. Uh, we'll see that later. Uh, magnetic wheel caps. Those are awesome. Bulkhead storage lid. Beautiful parts. Lens inserts. Just simple, but be exactly perfect. Ah, we've got our license plates. Uh, I got, I opted for both, uh, Back to the Future 1 and 2, and they are embossed. Like, they're not just flat painted things. Mr. Fusion transfers and a vinyl wrap, depending on which way I want to go with that. Dash panel and lens. Looks way better. Uh, plutonium case upgrade. I have no idea. Bought it. Uh, one to six switch box transfers. Uh, so this is going to come in useful. Uh, heel and toe pads. Why not? Um... We've got the bonnet and trunk carpet set with the tools and everything. And then we've got our uh, uh, bulkhead carpets. And we've got our uh, interior footwell carpets. And wow, okay. Uh, lots, lots of Mike Lane. Lots and lots of stuff. All of his stuff almost. Almost every single thing that he produces for the DeLorean, uh, we bought. Because, again, 50% off. Um, and I did find a pretty decent deal on the Diagostini kit on eBay. Um, since then, the, the remaining auction on eBay that has all the parts is going for, like, triple. I guess they figured out some of us were desperate. Then we've got model mods. And we've got the EL lights. Now, this is for the uh, flux bands and the uh, reactor. That's going to be awesome. Uh, we've got a battery cover kit uh, for our AC adapter hole. That's going to be great. For our uh, wireless 1 to 6 switch kit. So we don't need those stupid buttons inside the uh, cabin anymore. We've got, oh, the OG DeLorean power mod. I guess, yeah. AC adapter, some cables, wires, all that stuff. Um, they make a power mod light now. I think it runs on USB or something, but I'm not sure. Uh, we've got a cannon set. Uh, it's, it's for a part that Eagle Moss failed to even make for the back of the car. Oh, look at this. We got a little hoverboard just for fun. Look at that cute little thing. Uh, what else do we have in here? Uh, flux capacitor housing and circuit board. I opted for unpainted. Uh, because getting one painted, uh, Chloe there at Model Mods, she does a fantastic job painting. But it takes forever because she's very busy. Uh, the, tr the Christmas tree Sid housing board. Again, I went unpainted. We can paint here. We have one of these. We know how to use it. 
Uh, this model doesn't really require this thing unless you're doing, you know, mods that need painting or you want to just touch up some little areas where, yeah, lacking a tiny bit of detail. Uh, that's when we'll, we'll break out the heavy, the heavy guns. But yeah, we got, oh, so many goodies. So many goodies. And, uh, we don't need really any of these quite yet. Uh, the power mod probably sooner than the rest of them. Uh, once we start getting the chassis buttoned up. Okay, we're getting into this. Oh yeah, okay. So, tape, tape, tape. Uh, there we are. There we are. Let's see. This goes, oh, here's one thing we absolutely need to build this kit. Three-in-one oil uh, and a, a dispenser, okay? Because uh, these screws, they're metal screws, and they're not like machine screws they're like almost self-tapping screws and they're going and when they go in the metal that metal's not threaded perfectly china i'm sorry whatever it happens i've had plenty of other things in the past like that where yeah they're not they're not threaded all that great the japanese packaging is so much stouter than the american packaging it's so much so much nicer and then we got this like the book is kind of stapled into the box. Oi. Okay. Oh, well, whatever. Uh, oh, we're going to have so much waste from building this thing. So much. Oh, okay. Pulling our staples out. Ugh. Okay. So, uh, as part of this thing, yeah, here's the completed model. Ugh. Oh, I hit the camera. Sorry. Uh, it's going to be awesome. It's come on it's it's awesome there's some other inaccuracies on the model uh or just lack of detail and uh we also have a box of goodies coming in from darren gurney who makes some fantastic little mods as well so w we got we got all the heavy hitters involved mike lane model mods darren gurney in no particular order um they're all amazing all awesome they all just add to the car funny in the magazine they show the plate from back to the future 2 i don't know if eagle moss ever even gives you that plate as an optional part uh who knows okay yeah here here's our parts and then assembly so it's pretty easy i mean even though it's in japanese it bp screw you know the parts are pretty clearly you know uh called out there there's a lot of ads in this thing. What the heck is going on? My God. Look at all this. There we go. Finally, some more instructions. So we're going to start building this thing. Um, we've also got, you know, parts kit two with a fender. And then parts kit three with a wheel. And come on, guys. I, listen, you've seen enough of these damn builds. You've spent a half an hour watching someone do you know, four packages of parts. Like, it's... No one wants... I, I don't want to watch that. I don't know if you do. But uh, I'm going to get to the good stuff and the mods and the top tips for putting this thing together. Uh, because sooner or later, people will be able to continue uh, building this thing, hopefully, um, because a new company took over uh, Eagle Moss's assets. And we got things about the license plate, which we're going to completely ignore because we've got a way better one. And some stories, all in Japanese. Concept art, that's cool. That's pretty awesome. Okay. Some of these drawings, like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, they would have been cool if we didn't already fall in love with the car that we were given in, back in the 80s in the movie. So, either way, I'm going to get started putting this thing together, and I'll be right back. Just to remind everyone, yeah, see? It says Eagle Moss right on the back of the, the fancy Japanese packaging also. So, uh, yeah, uh, not going to bore anyone. Going to start putting this thing together. BRB. Okay, we're already starting with a tip. Uh, here we go. We have a, a, a magnetizer, demagnetizer, and our Viha screwdrivers. We're going to uh, give them a fresh pass through the magnetizer. Cheap thing, easy to find. Anybody makes them. I just have Viha because, oh, you know, I'm... I've got, I've got status to flex, of course, as all of the internet hobby builders would want to do. Um, oh my, uh, ah, in-laws, uh, I'll call her back. Um, I don't think, I don't think, uh, 
Yeah, the screwdriver is not magnetized by default from Eagle Moss, uh, D'Agostini. So, I mean, you can, you know, you just, you just swipe it through the magnetizer. And then, uh, and then she is... Ugh, I don't know what kind of crappy metal the thing's made out of. Uh, but first mod from our uh, vinyl sticker pack from Mike Lane. We have these little tiny stickers that go into the silver spot on this rear bumper to fill these little gaps because they're supposed to be black. Um, so, tweezer time! We're going to put these little stickers in. I don't think anyone wants to watch me do that. But uh, there's your tip. Magnetize your screwdrivers and... Mike Lane vinyl stickers are awesome. Be right back. <clears throat> so the little vinyl stickers are on. Uh, I'm pretty good with stickers. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, my friends would all invite me over after Christmas to put the stickers on all their G.I. Joe vehicles in the 80s because uh, they never got them straight. Now, what comes in handy is this. These are little uh, cuticle pushers. You can get a bag of these off Amazon, like a hundred of these for like a few bucks. And they have a, they have a soft silicone tip, okay? And they are perfect for smushing down and burnishing, as we say in the hobby, your decals. Um, or, in this case, your vinyl stickers. Uh, but they, they come in handy for that. That way you make sure they're, they're fully shoved into their little homes. Uh, Mike Lane's kind enough to give you two spares on that sheet of stickers. We did not need them, thank goodness. But, <clears throat> that being said, I'm not throwing them away. I'm going to keep them. And could you paint... Um, could you, you know, could you paint those little things? Yeah, you could paint them. It looks a little fiddly. Even for somebody who's like a pretty good model painter, uh, I, I'm pretty decent, but I wouldn't want to do that. So, just a tiny little touch. If it wasn't there and you showed it to some layperson, no one would notice. But, uh, of course, sorry, camera bump. Uh, yeah, we want to have that. BRB. So, you know what, it's like, we... They didn't do the black bits here, but if you look, I don't know if you guys can make it out or not, there's an itty bitty DMC logo right there in that lens. Like, I was using the big, the head goggly things, but yeah, look at that. It's, it's, uh, damn. I mean, some of the attention to detail was amazing, and others, uh, apparently lackluster. But, uh, nice little nugget of info there. Be right back. Here's a little uh, comparison between the Eagle Moss plate, which actually is embossed as well, surprisingly enough, and the Mike Lane plate. Um, the, the decals alone, <clears throat> yeah, totally way better. Um, but yeah, uh, you, so nice. And then we're going to affix this magnetically following the instructions. You don't need to see all that, but there's sticky magnets, and we're going to put this sucker on. We'll be right back. Here's where we are right now. Uh, we can't attach this until we get the other tail light in. So that requires <clears throat> issue two. Dear God, they, I mean, they make so much money off of these things. So we got our, our magazine here and our, our parts. We have a fender we're not going to use for God knows like 70 more steps probably or something ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to do that. Uh, same deal. Screws, parts, plastic, garbage, cardboard waste. You got it. All right, we'll be right back. Oh, there we have it. We have a completed uh, rear bumper section assembly. This thing has to come off again later um, to uh, install in the car, but it's easy enough to pop off. You just pop little tabs and she pops out. We've got our fender. All we did was attach the trim with a few screws. That's it. Nothing special. Um, the metal's nice and weighty. The metal parts. This thing's going to be super heavy. Um, the finish looks really nice on it so far. It's got a, a, a tinge of a yellowish, I don't know what it is. Um, this one is powder coat, powder coated, painted, or whatever it is. So that's fine. But yeah, the brushed part, I don't know. Some people have hit it with a metal polish and then cleared over it. Um, I don't know. We'll see how we do here. Uh, but either way, oh, these are important. Get the little bead, bead organizers uh, for all your screws and then stick the little tab that comes in the screw bag in that little container so you know which screws are which and uh, then you can have them organized AP BP P is for plastic M is for metal we're done with issue two guy bodge the pile of garbage of packaging from this model is 
astounding. And Japan, they're very, you know, forward thinking over there. Uh, dare we say progressive, but, and the green and the thing and the little compact efficient cars and a lot of public transportation and dear God, so much wasted cardboard. I mean, the American version is actually less wasteful in a lot of ways. Okay, a wheel. All right. We're going to start something here. Uh, another mod. Okay, so, um, ah, come on, open. There we go. <laughs> More Eagle Moss packaging. Told you. Everyone's like, oh, is it the same? I'm like, yes, it's exactly the same. The issues came in different order at some point in the build between Japan and the U.S., but they're the same damn parts from the same factory in China. Period. Okay, so the wheel. That's plastic. This is die cast metal. This is plastic. This is, uh, huh, chrome. Wrong. Eh, not supposed to look like that. Sorry. I had a little, 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 little bit wrong there. So, um, I think, uh, yeah. Uh, X32 titanium silver is what we're going to be going with, I believe. Um, if you go to mybttfdelorean.com, that dude has a great, great build website. But basically, um, you know, goes over repainting these to a more accurate color, uh, titanium silver. He's not, he doesn't, I don't know if, what kind of, what level of modeler he is exactly. Uh, but he did not, uh, I don't know if he primed them, if he clear coated after the the, the color coat. I'm not sure what he did. Uh, that being said, I am going to prime and paint and uh, semi-gloss clear these parts. Maybe matte. Maybe a flat coat. Uh, no, not flat. No, semi-gloss is, semi is appropriate. So we're going to do that and uh, we'll be back with that. One very, very, very light coat later of Tamiya Fine Surface Primer in light gray, which we're going to be using again later. The, the rim, <clears throat> the face of the rim is a uh, wheel, rim, whatever you want to call it, is now primed. Uh, we're going to use our uh, X32 Titanium Silver. we got to thin it down with X20A uh, acrylic paint thinner from Tamiya. You could thin it with other things. Uh, a lot of people like Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. Uh, that's a fantastic product, but that makes it stinky and more toxic. This is alcohol-based, and alcohol, at least in the correct forms and consumption styles, is not all that toxic. You fill the jar up to the glass lip with the Tamiya Thinner. We have thrown a small piece of uh, brass in there, a little metal ball-bearing bushing type thing, and... Uh, we are going to now mix up our paint. This is for nail polish, but it's great at mixing hobby paint. Um, yeah, that's that's. The, let me cover this thing up. I don't. I don't need the oil just yet. Uh, but yeah, the the paint mixer. You're gonna hear the clacky clack. Yeah, we wanna. You wanna do some handshaking, uh, of course. <laughs> if you saw my man boobs right now, I'm doing the truffle shuffle over here. Um, so I'm not gonna bore you with uh, shaking paint or airbrushing uh, because it's, I guess, assumed. But that's what's gonna happen. If you need to learn how to airbrush, fantastic channels all over YouTube. I recommend Andy's Hobby Headquarters. Uh, but yeah, we'll be right back. Okay, well, we're all done. Um, also, if you notice the valve stem cap, we popped those out and we painted those XF85 to be a rubber black. <clears throat> we sat in, we, uh, well, semi-gloss cleared with Mr. Hobby Super Clear. Some of the best stuff on the market. To me, it's, to me it's clear is fantastic as well. I just, I just like the Mr. Hobby stuff. But how much better does that look with a titanium silver than the stupid chrome-ish finish. Totally incorrect. And with the uh, semi-gloss clear, it looks like a brand new factory wheel, fresh out of powder coat or paint from the factory in Ireland. Amazing. They were able to put an even coat on. Uh, I'm half Irish, and I was able to do this, so they were able to build the DeLoreans. 
Um, we have to assemble all the wheels. Um, but yeah, you know, you can get an idea for how they're going to look. Very spiffy. Uh, so we're going to do that. It's, it's a few screws per wheel. Uh, some of the stuff we have to uh, retain for later because the wheels aren't going on the chassis yet. And there's a washer and a special screw just for that. And uh, we'll be right back. Well, there we go. We've got our wheels done. Okay. No center caps yet. Um, we uh, put these, put those on after. We're going to use the Mike Lane uh, magnetic center caps anyway. But uh, yeah, there you go. Nice. Oh, hey, look. I forgot a screw. Huh. Huh. Screw me. BP. Screw BP. There we go. We're, get, we're ending up with a bunch of extra BP screws. I think uh, some of them are just purely spares, and some of them are meant for later on in the build. Uh, you know, some of them are just meant because, like, you know, <laughs> you know, me with my sausage fingers, I've already dropped one screw. And I uh, had to sweep the floor with the magnet to find it. It wasn't too far away. But uh, yeah, we got our little DMC center caps there that are bone stock. Uh, you pop these in and it's very almost impossible to get them out without damaging them if you need to take the wheels off for any reason. But yeah, our rear wheels are considerably thicker and bigger. She's got a staggered set of wheels, but they look fantastic don't they all right so that being done uh yeah on to the next stage we'll be right back oh okay we gotta we're really toying with the youtube copyright algorithm here i think alan silvestri honestly one of my favorite composers of all time um you know he's up there he, john williams you know a handful of others harold faltermeyer you know, you too, buddy. You're in there. You're not a, as much of a classical composer. But either way, we've got like... <clears throat> okay, so this is this is basically the first stuff they send you. This is the first hit of crack for free from the dealer. Okay? This is what these companies send you. You're like, oh my god, I've got the iconic rear bumper from the car. And it hooks you. And you're like, okay, oh, this is going to be an amazing kit. And honestly, this part has been 99.9% .9 awesome. License plate, a little lacking. And uh, these little black things that we had to add on with vinyl stickers, fine, whatever. Not major details. The, 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 the stock plate is not terrible. It's, the stickers are pretty bad for it, but the plate itself is not bad. Now we've got, we've got some more of that, uh, that, that first hit of crack parts. We've got, obviously, the, new, you know, the reactor and the flux capacitor. Uh, optional, if you want to do your car in Back to the Future 2 style. Which we do. Where I'm going, I don't need roads. Okay, so freaking corny, Ian. Dear God. So the packaging changed after issue uh, like two or three, and you unwrap it, and it's it it comes out like this. And this is fine. I don't have a problem with that. This is the identical thing that uh, my Eagle Moss stuff came in. But yeah, D'Agostini does win the prize, I think, for the most wasteful amount of packaging uh, for a part work. Because, like, Eagle Moss would just mail you this in a box with instructions. And they got, you know, Diagostini's like, yeah, hold my beer. So, we do have, uh, I have two of these now. But now I've got one in Japanese! Oh, okay. And it comes in monochrome and color. That is very cool. That, damn. And does that does that mean the A car? I'm confused. I have no idea. Oh, B. I don't know what the A and B designation is really here. B. It has doesn't have Mr. Fusion on it. It but it shows the hover mode, which looks kind of crappy, honestly, on this kit. And A reactor, and then it shows Mr. F I don't know. I. I'm going to take Google Translate to this and try to decipher it. This is not garbage. The rest of all this stuff, dear God. All right. Well, we're going to crack these parts out. We'll put them together. Ooh, we've got more mods for Mr. Fusion. Um, after this, we are going to crack open the remaining parts between 5 and 14. That is the entire rolling chassis for the most part. Um, as far as I am aware. I mean, there's floor plates and other things that go in after that. But as far as a 
the the backbone of the suspension and the chassis. That'll be that. That's getting a lot of gray. Uh, uh, to me, a fine surface primer in light gray to more closely resemble a real DeLorean frame. Uh, I've done some research. I've looked at fully restored DeLoreans at DeLorean Motor Cars and other sources, myBTTFDeLorean.com. He's gone over all this. I am not breaking any new ground. I am following his footsteps. I'm just double checking for myself on occasion. Now, he painted brake calipers, um, or he left them silver, but in fact, Mm, eh, most of the ones I can see for fully restored calipers that are supposedly OE standard, they are a uh, a gold uh, zinc type, whatever it is. Uh, they're 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 a goldish color, actually an oil slicky rainbowy gold color. I don't think I can reproduce that with the paint I have. I'm sure there's a paint that'll do that. Um, if you know of the paint that'll be like a rainbowy oil slicky goldish color. Put it in the comments. Let me know. I'll order some of that paint up. We'll try it out. We'll see see how it works. But we'll get these together real quick, and I'll be right back. More great music from Alan Silvestri to be playing while I'm doing this. We've got a couple more mods here. Uh, you can see my phone there. I'm on my BTTFDeLorean.com's build page, and <clears throat> this Mr. Fusion, it looks like shite. Yeah, Eagle Moss, what the hell? I mean, from a distance, from the good side, all right, yeah, okay, we'll let it, we'll let it pass, maybe, but, um, no, our, uh, what is this, a Cuisinart coffee grinder, or a Krups, I think it's a Cuisinart, uh, in real life, <laughs> we're gonna fix this up a little bit, we're gonna fill these screw holes in with putty, and we have two options here, we have the Mr. Fusion transfers and the vinyl wrap. The transfers you would use is if you're going to fill it and then you're going to paint it white and obviously not, yeah, you're just going to paint it white and then you could rub on the transfers and that'll look great. Um, but to save a little work since maybe people buying this are not, you know, uh, moderate to advanced level modelers that want to deal with, you know, rub on transfers are a little tricky, but also all the filling and the painting and everything. You should still fill the holes, of course. But we got the Mr. Fusion vinyl wrap from Mike Lane's Mods. So that's what we're going to use. On top of that, um, I, I got to get on a first name basis with the guy who uh, did the My BTF. The, the, it's such a long. He, he has it for every build. But either way, the plastic parts of Mr. Fusion are uh, supposed to be a slightly tinted uh, plastic. And these are just clear, plain old clear. So we're going to paint these up. Um, if he said to smoke them, he didn't have to tell me what paint color to use. To me, X19 smoke. We're going to smoke them. We're going to give them a little gloss primer. Uh, sorry, gloss clear coat on the outside after we gloss them. Just, just for good measure in case they do get foggy. Yeah, but we're going to do that and we will BRB. We're back. We just make things more difficult every damn time we do something. Does the music stop now? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I don't want to lose my good graces with YouTube. Um, so I started, I filled it, we sanded, I started going down to black. Eagle Moss's paint is m micron thin on this thing. So we got down to some black and while I do have the full vinyl wrap, I don't want to risk any black showing through. So I'm going to use a little Tamiya Fine Surface Primer white. Okay, I have a little bit left. I don't use it a lot, white primer. Actually, I should probably get some for my Enterprise someday. And this thing, less than ideal. It's, everything's a little janky. It, I, I have it all hand lined up, but like, this never really fully latches into place where, like, it should be there, but it just sits there by default. Eh, whatever. It's fine. You know, good from far, far from good. That's uh, how we do a lot of things down here, apparently. Hit it with a little, hit this with a little primer. Very light dustings. Wear a respirator, use ventilation. I have a giant box fan with, an air, with a Merv 13 air filter on it. And I have a uh, organic vapor uh, cartridge respirator from 3M. Uh, that's what we're going to do. We're still waiting for that uh, smoke paint to uh, dry. The clear colors from Tamiya, the clear paints, clear, the smoke, clear red, clear blue, 
clear orange, clear yellow. They all take the longest to dry. I don't know why. Just whatever's in them. They dry super slow. The glossier a paint is, I find, the slower it dries. Um, usually also laying it on thicker because you want a nice smooth gloss. So it's probably twofold. Uh, or mostly just laying it on thicker. Who knows? Um, oh, we do have our... We have a little thing of 3-in-1 oil here handy. Uh, that was some really pro-grade top tip from... Uh, Oh no, we're about to overflow. Um, with this little push top dispenser thing. Let's just sop up some of that three in one oil. How about we do that? We're made of money down here. We can afford another bottle of three in one oil if we ever really needed to buy it. Um, I think this bottle would last for about 20 part work builds, but apparently the threads and everything, not so great. But either way, let me prime this shut up and I'll be right back. Not you shut up, me shut up. Just, just making that clear. Oh, Eagle Moss, oh! So this, the little cap to the nuclear reactor, that black part was crooked. It wasn't level. It was sticking out at one end. And when I did that, it would fall out of the reactor thing. So I had to, I had to pop it apart. I had to carve away at it with, it, with an X-Acto knife or a hobby knife, whatever you want to call it. Let's go generic, hobby knife. Um, because even when you twist it in, it was it was just falling out before. It still kind of wants to fall out, but now it doesn't. Before it would just pff, fall right out. So a uh, little, yeah, little 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 uh, sanding on the black bottom part, a little carving on the inside of the top yellow part, then a judicious application of uh, Krazy glue, and uh, yeah, she's 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 level and she's true and look at okay. There's a lot of little things, and every kit's going to be... There'll be a slightly different defect in every one. So, some modeling skills are handy for this build. Uh, we're almost dry with our white primer. I had to lay it on pretty thick to cover all the black, and uh, so it's taking longer to dry. Thicker coat, longer dry time. Uh, the clear, the smoke is still drying, so we'll... we'll and a little... It's going to be huge and awesome when it's done, and it's going to be more awesome than it came out of the factory. Um, this is not what we call in the Gundam world a snap build. Okay, Bandai things snap together, boom, you're done. You know, like here. Here we go. Here's a, here's a Master Grade RX-78 II from Gundam The Origins. Snap build, and uh, it's basically, it was perfect, it required no work. No real glue unless I really wanted to glue something. But yeah, it, uh, Bandai, this is not. As I say in many videos, you know, if we do a Tamiya or a Bandai, we know what we're getting. Uh, either way, I'm, I'm covered in, in dust and my fingers have little hard spots from crazy glue. Almost done with the Mr. Fusion and, geez, I might do the chassis in the next part. I don't know, we got a lot going on here. Be right back. <clears throat> and here we go, our completed Mr. Fusion with tinted plastic. Looks legit. The vinyl wrap, very nice, very nice. Okay, uh, I did have to do a bit of sanding on the bottom of Mr. Fusion. He had some, uh, you know, nubs. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, parts sprue, parts tree, parts runner leftovers on the bits. You know, eh, nub removal. We're used to it if you build any other model kits. So we're gonna put this together, but we've also got, ha ah, Mike Lane's base plate and the fuel. Let's check that out. So this way we can open Mr. Fusion and throw in, oh, look, it's nice and thin and floppy. Period, correct, why is it in a smoked Ziploc bag? I don't know. Ah, guys, yeah. To quote the great Peter Vakeman, it's millet time. And we got some banana banana peels, just like in the movie. That's awesome. Okay, we'll have that in together in a jiffy. BRB. Yeah, jiffy my left nut. Uh, the posts on the bottom of this, too long. Okay. I had to sand those down. Just put a piece of, you know, six, eight hundred grit sandpaper flat. It wasn't sitting flush on the metal plate. Come on! Oh, come on, Eagle Moss. I love Back to the Future so much, I'm so giddy building this. But at the same time, I'm like, 
What did I expect from, you know, uh, Eagle Moss in China? I don't know. All right, now we'll have it together in a jiffy. Be right back. One jiffy later. Jeez, <clears throat> Eagle Moss, really? <sighs> okay, there we go. Mr. Fusion opens. We've got a solid floor in the bottom. I don't know why Eagle Moss wouldn't have done that in the first place. Anyways, little beer can. A couple banana peels. There we go. Beer cans. There we go. That looks better laying over. And then we shall close her up. And there we are. And Bob's your uncle. We've got a Mr. Fusion with, uh, you know, cover uh, base plate or whatever it is. And then this will, like, just sit over the reactor when we put it on the car in the real reel. Um, you know, we got to remove a couple hoses, but yeah, it just kind of like plops down there on the back. Which means we won't need this till the end of the damn build. So off with the free crack parts it goes. Because that's what we do with the free crack parts. Toodaloo to you for I don't know how many weeks before we need them again. Okay, so it's gotten quite late tonight. Um, I feel uh, I've probably recorded quite long enough. So this will be part one, which was literally issues... I don't know, one through four plus all of the wheels from wherever they came from <clears throat> so that we could custom paint them titanium silver, right? Yeah, titanium silver, which it's a beautiful finish. It's almost got a little bit of a patina to it. And we do have the, the magnetic DMC wheel caps from Mike Lane's mods to go on these, but we're going to wait until we put the screw and the washer into the wheel to affix it to the chassis. Um, but... Uh, next next video will be uh, building the entire chassis and suspension in one video. A lot of the parts work guys, they show you like basically every screw going in, or they just show you their big ugly face with whatever T-shirt they thought was oh ha ha the everybody will get a kick out of this T-shirt I'm wearing. I get it. I have a few of those shirts myself, but this is not that video. We're gonna cover. The nitty gritty of the kit, the problems, the mods, um, and the finished beautiful product, and, and my personal observations of not looking so good so far as far as Eagle Moss's uh, attention to detail and quality control. But overall, this is a beautiful thing. It's an amazing kit. I'm super happy I have it. I'm so just just lucky to be able to build this thing. So many people out there. Eh. Don't worry, it'll get better. We're getting this, starting to get the emails from IXO or PCT or whoever it is um, that they've got our personally identifiable information in China and they know what to do with it. What's new? All right, well, we'll be seeing you next time on Pit Stains Hobbies. This is probably bringing in a whole new group of people. Check out my other videos. I build all sorts of stuff. I, I'm just, I'm even crazier in some videos. So... Please subscribe and like and, uh, you know, feed the algorithm. Comment. Please. Hate mail even. Criticize. I don't care. Uh, we'll be back next time with Ian's Dirty Hands.